October 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 29 and 30 from the Old Testament. The prophet Jeremiah sent a letter to the exiles Nebuchadnezzar had carried off from Jerusalem to Babylon. It was addressed to the elders who were left among the exiles, to the priests, to the prophets, and to all the other people who were exiled in Babylon. He sent it after King Jehoiakim, the Queen Mother, the palace officials, the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the metal workers had been exiled from Jerusalem. He sent it with Elisa, son of Shaphan, and Gemara, son of Hilkiah. King Zedekiah of Judah had sent these men to Babylon, to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. The letter said, The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says to all those he sent into exile to Babylon from Jerusalem, Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and allow your daughters to get married so that they too can have sons and daughters. Grow in number. Do not dwindle away. Work to see that the city where I sent you as exiles enjoys peace and prosperity. Pray to the Lord for it, for as it prospers, you will prosper. For the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, Do not let the prophets, or those among you who claim to be able to predict the future by divination, deceive you. And do not pay any attention to the dreams that you are encouraging them to dream. They are prophesying lies to you and claiming my authority to do so. But I did not send them. I, the Lord, affirm it. For the Lord says only when the seventy years of Babylonian rule are over will I again take up consideration for you. Then I will fulfill my gracious promise to you and restore you to your homeland. For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. When you call out to me and come to me in prayer, I will hear your prayers. When you seek me in prayer and worship, you will find me available to you. If you seek me with all your heart and soul, I will make myself available to you, says the Lord. Then I will reverse your plight and will regather you from all the nations and all the places where I have exiled you, says the Lord. I will bring you back to the place from which I exiled you. You say the Lord has raised up prophets of good news for us here in Babylon. But just listen to what the Lord has to say about the king who occupies David's throne and all your fellow countrymen who are still living in the city of Jerusalem and were not carried off into exile with you. The Lord who rules over all says, I will bring war, starvation, and disease on them. I will treat them like figs that are so rotten they cannot be eaten. I will chase after them with war, starvation, and disease. I will make all the kingdoms of the earth horrified at what happens to them. I will make them examples of those who are cursed, objects of horror, hissing scorn, and ridicule among all the nations where I exile them. For they have not paid attention to what I said to them through my servants, the prophets, whom I sent to them over and over again, says the Lord. And you exiles have not paid any attention to them either, says the Lord. So pay attention to what I, the Lord, have said, all you exiles whom I have sent to Babylon from Jerusalem. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, also has something to say about Ahab, son of Coliah, and Zedekiah, son of Maaseah, who are prophesying lies to you and claiming my authority to do so. I will hand them over to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and he will execute them before your very eyes. And all the exiles of Judah who are in Babylon will use them as examples when they put a curse on anyone. They will say, May the Lord treat you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted to death in the fire. This will happen to them because they have done what is shameful in Israel. They have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lies while claiming my authority. They have spoken words that I did not command them to speak. I know what they have done. I have been a witness to it, says the Lord. The Lord told Jeremiah, Tell Shemaiah the Nahilamite that the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, has a message for him. Tell him, 
On your own initiative, you sent a letter to the priest Zephaniah, son of Maaseah, and to all the other priests and to all the people in Jerusalem. In your letter, you said to Zephaniah, The Lord has made you priest in place of Jehoiada. He has put you in charge in the Lord's temple of controlling any lunatic who pretends to be a prophet. And it is your duty to put any such person in the stocks with an iron collar around his neck. You should have reprimanded Jeremiah from Anathoth, who is pretending to be a prophet among you. For he has even sent a message to us here in Babylon. He wrote and told us, You will be there a long time. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. If Zephaniah the priest read that letter to the prophet Jeremiah, then the Lord spoke to Jeremiah, Send a message to all the exiles in Babylon. Tell them, The Lord has spoken about Shemaiah the Nahilamite. Shemaiah has spoken to you as a prophet, even though I did not send him. He is making you trust in a lie. Because he has done this, the Lord says, I will punish Shemaiah the Nahilamite and his whole family. There will not be any of them left to experience the good things that I will do for my people. I, the Lord, affirm it. For he counseled rebellion against the Lord. The Lord spoke to Jeremiah. The Lord God of Israel says, Write everything that I am about to tell you in a scroll. For I, the Lord, affirm that the time will come when I will reverse the plight of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord. I will bring them back to the land I gave their ancestors, and they will take possession of it once again. So here is what the Lord has to say about Israel and Judah. Yes, here is what he says. You hear cries of panic and terror. There is no peace in sight. Ask yourselves this and consider it carefully. Have you ever seen a man give birth to a baby? Why then do I see all these strong men grabbing their stomachs in pain like a woman giving birth? And why do their faces turn so deathly pale? Alas, what a terrible time of trouble it is. There has never been anything like it. It is a time of trouble for the descendants of Jacob, but some of them will be rescued out of it. When the time for them to be rescued comes, says the Lord who rules over all, I will rescue you from foreign subjugation. I will deliver you from captivity. Foreigners will then no longer subjugate them, but they will be subject to the Lord their God and to the Davidic ruler whom I will raise up as king over them. So I, the Lord, tell you not to be afraid. You descendants of Jacob, my servants, do not be terrified, people of Israel, for I will rescue you and your descendants from a faraway land where you are captives. The descendants of Jacob will return to their land and enjoy peace. They will be secure and no one will terrify them. For I, the Lord, affirm that I will be with you and will rescue you. I will completely destroy all the nations where I scattered you, but I will not completely destroy you. I will indeed discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not allow you to go entirely unpunished. Moreover, the Lord says to the people of Zion, Your injuries are incurable. Your wounds are severe. There is no one to plead your cause. There are no remedies for your wounds. There is no healing for you. All your allies have abandoned you. They no longer have any concern for you, for I have attacked you like an enemy would. I have chastened you cruelly, for your wickedness is so great and your sin is so much. Why do you complain about your injuries that your pain is incurable? I have done all this to you because your wickedness is so great and your sin is so much. But all who destroyed you will be destroyed. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plundered you will be plundered. I will cause those who pillaged you to be pillaged. Yes, I will restore you to health. I will heal your wounds. I, the Lord, affirm it. For you have been called an outcast, Zion, whom no one cares for. The Lord says, I will restore the ruined houses of the descendants of Jacob. I will show compassion on their ruined homes. Every city will be rebuilt on its former ruins. Every fortified dwelling will occupy its traditional site. Out of those places, you will hear songs of thanksgiving and the sounds of laughter and merriment. I will increase their number and they will not dwindle away. I will bring them honor and they will no longer be despised. The descendants of Jacob will enjoy their former privileges. 
their community will be reestablished in my favor, and I will punish all who try to oppress them. One of their own people will be their leader. Their ruler will come from their own number. I will invite him to approach me, and he will do so. For no one would dare approach me on his own. I, the Lord, affirm it. Then you will again be my people, and I will be your God. Just watch. The wrath of the Lord will come like a storm. Like a raging storm, it will rage down on the heads of those who are wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has fully carried out his intended purposes. In days to come, you will come to understand this. God, for many of us, Jeremiah 29:11 is a favorite verse. It shows up on the list a lot. For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. But a lot of people don't know the context that that is in, and I think it applies greatly to our lives. This context is you telling them, I'm about to send you into 70 years of exile. You are going to be away from the land I gave you as my people for 70 years. You're going to be under the rule of somebody else. At the end of 70 years, a remnant of you I'm going to bring back and I am going to destroy Babylon for taking you into exile. And, and you have to understand this is a punishment. This is discipline for you disobeying me. I, as your father, get to do that. Um, and a couple of interesting things are happening here. One, you love us enough to discipline us. And working with youth in our church, I see this a lot. Uh, parents who are either love their children enough to discipline them, or parents who sadly don't love their kids enough and are more worried about what their kids think and have all these squishy boundaries with their kids because literally one mom told me this I don't want her to be mad at me so the fact that you love us so much that you're willing to to discipline us so that we have a better life so that we grow in our relationship with you is just incredible but the fact that these people are being disobedient to you and in the midst of all of that you come to them and just wrap your arms around them and say I need you to understand I have to discipline you because I love you but I also love you and don't forget that I have plans for you plans to do great things for you as my people you have a future filled with hope and I want you to remember the people who weren't put into exile they're about to die from war and starvation and disease that is their punishment because I chose not to give them a, a kind of safe place to hang out during this discipline. And while you're in the middle of this discipline, I want you to make the best of it. I want you to live your lives. I want you to have peace. I want you to have joy. But I want you to understand you're kind of in time out for 70 years because you're being disobedient to me. The other part I absolutely love about this God is you go on to say, when you call out to me, see a lot of people only know verse 11, <laughs> they forget the rest. When you call out to me and come to me in prayer, I will hear your prayers. I'm not going anywhere. For the next 70 years, don't think I have ditched you. I am right here. When you seek me in prayer and worship, you will find me available to you. If you seek me with all your heart and soul, I will make myself available to you. How incredible, God, to know that even when we're in the midst of receiving a discipline, disciplinary action that we totally deserve, that we know that you are still there just loving us and still giving us grace and mercy, just like you gave them grace and mercy by not putting them through war, putting them through starvation, putting them through disease. You gave them an opportunity to still have lives, to still marry, to still have children, and most important, to still worship you, even though they were in exile. So God, allow us when we read the Bible to not just cherry pick verses that we are so want to do, especially with social media, but help us to understand the context of what 
those verses are. I think Jeremiah 29 11 becomes even more powerful when you understand that this verse was said to people who were basically being banished, who were taking, being taken away from the land they had always known, that their generations had known, their, their homes were there. It would be like if somebody came into the United States and say, okay, um, because you didn't do this, we are sending you off to Russia and you're going to live someplace new and it's going to be uh, a new people, new territory, new languages, new food, new culture, new uh, weather, <laughs> new everything. Um, and you've got to be there for 70 years and some of you will die in exile. But there are some of you that will get to come back to the United States after 70 years. It's amazing to me that this verse wasn't just said kind of in passing. And that's how we use this verse a lot as kind of a comfort passage in our normal everyday life. But you said this to people who you were having to discipline and you sweep in underneath of them with support and encouragement. And you say, just so you know, I am not going anywhere. I am right here for you. You can communicate with me at any time you need to through prayers. I will hear you. I am available to you. I am not going anywhere, but this has to be done because of how much I love you. Jeremiah 29, 11 takes on a whole new meaning then when we understand how severe this punishment was and how grace-filled and mercy-filled your promise to them was on top of that. I also thank God about how many times we are sent into exile how many times we're given a punishment by you and these people at least knew that they weren't part of the group that was the war starvation disease group sometimes we don't have the benefit of knowing that there was a more severe punishment available and we got off kind of with the secondary punishment and it seems like sometimes when we're in that punishment phase, that discipline phase, we think that we got the worst punishment and we can't believe that you're doing that to us, you know, out of our sheer arrogance. But what we fail to realize is sometimes that, that kind of secondary discipline is going to be way better off for us than what some of the other people are going to receive as their discipline. In this case, the war, starvation, and disease. At least these people, although in a completely foreign and new nation, at least they are still able to be with their families. They're still able to um, live lives. They're still able to worship you. The people involved with the discipline of war, starvation, and disease are going to go through horrid, horrid things and their lives will end. Um, so God help us to remember those two things. One, that whatever discipline you have have or are currently or will put us through in the future i'm sure i fit that bill on all three of those that it is best for us for what we need to be in because you know what is best for us and part two help us to always remember that you haven't gone anywhere that you are right here beside us we can communicate and call out to you at any time through prayer in fact you want us to continue that relationship with you and part of learning through that discipline is having that conversation with you, having that relationship with you, uh, asking you to open our eyes and our hearts to what it is that you're showing us during that discipline so that we come out stronger for you, so that we can worship and glorify you even greater, God. Thank you for allowing us to learn more about your words. Sometimes they're words that we've only heard on Pinterest or Facebook or thrown around in church. It's just incredible to get to hear the whole story of why you said certain things, how you said certain things, and the amazing love that comes from those things that you have told us. In your son's name I pray. Amen.